Okay, hello everyone and welcome to round three of the Writing Wikipedia Articles course. Uh, sorry for the late start here, uh, but I'm glad to see that everyone has found their way to the Blackboard Collaborate webinar tool. And in this session, uh, I'm going to give you a, a general overview both of Wikipedia and how it works and also of the tools that we'll be using in this class. So hopefully this will, uh, will give you everything you need to uh, be comfortable in joining us every week and knowing where to go to find your homework and find other classmates to work with on your projects and things like that. So uh, just to start off, I'd like to briefly introduce myself and my co-instructor, Sarah Frank Bristow. Um, my name is Pete Forsyth, and I have been editing Wikipedia since 2006. Um, I started off uh, editing purely for fun and personal interest, mostly working on articles about Oregon, which was my home state at the time. Uh, and I, I met a lot of other people through working on Wikipedia who were interested in similar topics and really just had a, a, a great time uh, learning about new things and, uh, and finding people to work with. Uh, and I gradually uh, moved my, my consulting business to, uh, to focus on Wikipedia. Uh, I also worked for about a year and a half for the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, developing what is now the Wikipedia Education Program. And that is something that basically supports professors in assigning Wikipedia writing to their students, so that instead of doing something like writing a term paper, uh, a student might work on a Wikipedia article and then report back to the class or the instructor uh, about how that experience went. So uh, this particular pro this particular class has grown out of a project that Sarah and I uh, have been working on for the past year called Communicate OER. So OER uh, is short for Open Educational Resources. And our purpose in this project is to help the, the really the global community that is interested in open educational resources and their potential to, uh, to improve educational opportunities around the world to improve articles relevant to that movement on Wikipedia. So we'll be looking at those articles starting today and throughout the course, and, um, and many of you will be working on those articles in your homework. Uh, so Sarah uh, is my co-instructor. I'm sure you see her in the, in the participants window in Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, Sarah Frank Bristow uh, has come to this project by a somewhat different path. Uh, she's a, uh, a researcher in distance learning, and so open educational resources are, are one of many topics within that general area. Um, and so she has worked on various wikis, uh, not so much Wikipedia originally, um, prior to coming to this project, uh, but wikis that uh, that have to do with keeping track of uh, research around uh, around distance learning. So I think we we bring uh, quite a variety of skills and, and uh, expertise to this class, and I'm sure that all of you do as well. So I really look forward to getting to know everyone else in the class. So is there anything else you'd like to add to that before I move on? No, hello. Uh, thank you, Pete. Um, uh, we have a user who is having difficulty with audio, so I'm going to paste in some of our URLs that can help people sort those things out. And also, Pete, you are aware of a certain difficulty with um, a Mac operating system. Is that correct? Yes, there is. Um, the the most recent Mac OS uh, has some settings around Java that are designed to. Uh, it's a, a security issue that makes it difficult to connect to Blackboard Collaborate. Is there someone who's having problems with that right now, or? I yeah, think that if someone's connected, uh, I probably have gotten past the problems, but I may be wrong. About yes, that. OK. So I'll just paste in the help file URLs for audio. Excellent. So yeah, I think you covered everything. We're good to go. Hi, everybody, okay. and thank you for joining us. And in, in terms of the sort of the structure of how we do the classes, I will generally be doing uh, most of the most of the teaching and uh, walking you through Wikipedia articles and things like that. And Sarah is. 
uh, generally going to be more active in the chat window, and she manages the Etherpad shared notes uh, page, which you have surely seen the link to. And uh, please, please click in there if you haven't already. Um, so if you if you have a question as I'm going along, typically the best thing to do is to make sure that Sarah sees it first, and then she'll uh, break in and uh, and find a good spot to pass it along to me. Or she may be able to just, if it's a small question, she can um, usually just answer it uh, in the chat window. So um, I guess first I'd like to cover uh, the basic tools that we're using. Uh, obviously, you have found your way to Blackboard Collaborate. So congratulations on that. Uh, if you had any difficulty, uh, I'm sorry about that. It's, a, it's been generally a useful tool for us, but it does have some quirks. Uh, so feel free to let us know and ask if you have any, any difficulties. Etherpad, which I just mentioned, uh, you'll see a link at the bottom of your main screen. Uh, it says taking notes at and gives you a big link. So if you click on that link, if you're not familiar with Etherpad, it's basically, a, it's like a live version of a wiki, uh, meaning that it's a, it's a web page that anyone can add to or edit, move things around, uh, but it, it works in a live uh, format where you don't have to hit a save button, you can just immediately start typing. So I think it's pretty self-explanatory. If you look at the page, you'll see uh, color coding, which indicates who has typed what, um, and you can click anywhere onto that page and start adding things. The way that we use it in the class is generally that uh, as we're going along, if there are things that come up that are of interest and that people want to preserve, they'll put something in the notes section. Uh, and also uh, links and URLs that come up will be generally put in the section below that. So please feel free to add anything here. Uh, if you're someone who likes to take notes for yourself, um, you might find that it's more useful to just take notes here because then you'll end up with um, with a collection of notes not, not only from yourself but from your classmates and you might find things in there that you missed during the class or uh, ideas that are useful to come back to. Um, I also uh, I wanted to uh, mention the the School of Open, which is really the uh, another very important uh, sort of reason of, for of existence uh, for this class. Uh, the Peer to Peer University is a website um, that is designed to allow people to create their own courses and teach them. And the School of Open is a new uh, school within that uh, university that focuses on openness, so uh, open educational resources, open source, open access, uh, various related concepts like that. And so we started this, this course as a school of open course. Um, in the first round, we ran it very much from that website. And as we've moved along, uh, we found that for practical reasons, it's much, much easier to, um, to uh, make most of our pages on Wikipedia, uh, and so we're not really using the tools of the School of Open as much as we did initially, but this is still very much a School of Open course, and uh, and I just wanted to give some acknowledgement to that project and that community. Um, and finally, uh, and this is something that uh, you don't really need to uh, we'll, we'll be coming back to this before it's um, before you really need to know it, but just to give you a little preview of a tool that we'll be using in the course. Uh, and actually, I'm going to turn on uh, web sharing here. So give me just a moment. Um, let's see. So Wikipedia has uh, has course pages, which you will, if you went fully through the uh, the enrollment process, you will see this courses link in the upper right hand side of your screen. Um, so I think everyone should be able to see my screen now. It's been a few weeks since we've done this. So uh, if someone can confirm that, that would be good. OK. Um, it looks great. OK, good. Uh, so in the upper right hand corner here next to your, your name, you'll see this link. It says courses, actually literally between preferences and watch list. And at any time, if you click on that, you're going to, oh, I, I'm using a demo account that I didn't actually sign up for this course in my demo account yet. But it'll show uh, lists 
a, a list of edits by your fellow students. Um, and so this this may be something that as as we start editing pages together will be a useful way of of keeping track of uh, what your fellow classmates are doing. Uh, but a more immediate uh, tool for that is so so I, I want to give you a, a brief tour also of our pages on Wikipedia here. So I'm going to start with our main course page uh, and you've probably got this bookmarked by now. This is where you want to sign up. So this is our central page uh, for the entire course. And at any time, anything that you need to know about the course should be on or linked from this page. Uh, the banner at the top here is something that we, uh, we generally put on every page related to the course. And it will, uh, it will link back to this page. So you should always be able to click on writing Wikipedia articles or on round three. They'll go to the same place and bring you back here. Uh, and then you'll see this, this beige week one box. So this is something that I just put in for this week, and that'll be updated every week uh, just before class to give you a link to that week's page. And then if we go down to the very bottom of the page, um, the, this, the, the last section here you probably read when you signed up on grading. Uh, talks about the Wikisu Burba badge. So this is our uh, the, what we're all working towards in the course. Um, this is basically a, a bit of recognition that you can earn through the class uh, if you uh, if your if your final project article uh, meets the criteria of being improved uh, on the Wikipedia article quality scale. And so we'll get into more detail about what that means mainly in week three. That's where we really introduce that project. Uh, but that's the uh, essentially the 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 barn star uh, in Wikipedia parlance or a badge in peer-to-peer uh, -peer university parlance uh, that you can earn through the course. And then below that, this this uh, I guess light purple or blue box here is also something that will uh, live on every uh, just about every page for the course. And this is a way to uh, to navigate around to a number of different things that are that are of use in the course. So, as you see, each week has its own line. Uh, the 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 link, the name of the course, will link you to this week's page. Uh, and then there are some shortcuts to the right of that. To uh, a, a link you can click that'll tell you the time, which is it's the same for every class and every lab session. Uh, it's 3 in the afternoon universal time, uh, which is 8 a.m. on the West Coast of the U.S. or 4 p.m. in London. And you can, if you want to find out exactly what time it is in your town, you can click that. And also where it says past archives, this will be a link to the archived video sessions from the last time we ran this course. So if you know you're going to miss a session uh, and you want to, um, you want to watch this ahead of time or about the same time, you can always check, uh, you can always watch the previous archive. Um, but uh, also we will be posting archives of these sessions typically about 20, 24 hours after we're done with them. So you can, uh, you can also just wait and then watch the archive of this class. That'll be on this line here. Uh, and we always post them in Blackboard Collaborate format, which launches you basically into this webinar software to watch it. And we've been trying to post them in YouTube format also. Uh, we're having some technical hurdles there, so it, it doesn't always get done, but hopefully we'll be able to get those all up uh, for this round of the course. And then at the bottom of this, uh, this what's called a navigation box here, uh, so this whole blue thing would be called a navigation box. Um, you'll see the course discussion page, the teams page, the final project description, and the student project list. Uh, for now, really just the, the first two of those are going to be relevant um, in this course, and we'll get to the other ones later. The course discussion page is, is your main place to ask questions, explore ideas, uh, talk about what you're working on. So we'll be using that very heavily. Uh, and before I click into that, I, I, want to point out we're we're essentially we're recycling the same page that we used in the last round of the course. So uh, 
we, we have students from the last round that are still actively working on their projects, and they will probably be coming by from time to time. Uh, and this is something new that we're doing this time to combine those pages, but we, we hope that that will be a useful dynamic because I think our, our previous students, uh, a couple of which are actually taking the course again officially, but even those who aren't officially taking it, if they stop by, will probably be able to help answer questions and talk over ideas with you as well. So uh, I'm going to click into that. We, we have the, the link down here, but also it's going to be at the top of every, um, of every page associated with our course where it says talk to the right project page. So that's another way you can link to it. And uh, we'll, <clears throat> okay, and then, um, so on, on this page, you'll, you'll see uh, like every talk page, and we'll see this on other Wikipedia uh, pages shortly, there's a new section link. And if you click new section, that will enable you to type in uh, a headline and a question or a comment. And then when you hit save, it's going to show up at the bottom of this page. So the things that you see before you get to the bottom are going to be some old comments, and those will gradually move into the archives. The newest stuff will always be at the bottom. OK, so uh, I think that's enough uh, on the tools we're using for now. So let's uh, uh, just take a moment for a sip of coffee and to collect my thoughts, and, uh, and then we'll jump in and look at a Wikipedia article and start to get a feel for how that fits together. Okay, so I think the, uh, the best way to get a feel for how Wikipedia works is to look at an article. So I have a few things that I'll cover as we do this, but I've, I've chosen this article, Open Educational Practices, which was a student project from the last session um, to look at, and we're going we're gonna to just look at some of the different sections and some of the software features of how Wikipedia works. So, um, and I, I'm not assuming that anyone is familiar with this topic. I think it's going to start to make sense probably as we look through the article. Uh, essentially, uh, this class itself is basically an example of an open educational practice. But the, the goal here is really more to just look at the structure of a Wikipedia article and the way that it works. So the first thing that you'll see is the, the, the first paragraph here that co comes above the table of contents is generally known as the lead section. When I'm, when I'm looking at a Wikipedia article, I, I will uh, often draw some conclusions just by looking at the, uh, at the lead section. As you've probably noticed as you've looked at Wikipedia before, sometimes you just have like a one sentence lead section, sometimes even when the article itself is very, very long. And you'll probably, you'll find that that tells you something about how the article has evolved. Because summarizing a, a broad topic is some of the harder work in an article. So usually if you have a full looking lead section like this that's, I don't know, maybe six or seven sentences and has a number of footnotes in it, that's usually a, a, a good sign that someone has really put a lot of thought into this article and in gathering together all the information in the other sections and summarizing them in one place. So it makes the article more useful. And in order for that to happen, uh, typically that's going to mean that it's not just a bunch of random facts that many, many people have thrown at the article, but someone has synthesized them and brought them together like this. Um, so moving down, of course, there are uh, many different sections for the article. And uh, you, can, you can always click in the table of contents. That will jump you down to that section. So if I click on definitions here, it's going to jump and put definitions uh, at the top of the page. And you're going to see different formats in the different sections here. So uh, prose is typically, the, is, is really the core of, of how Wikipedia works. But you'll see in many places things like bullet lists and uh, tables and columns. Uh, so as you're, as you're developing articles, for the most part, you're going to be focusing on the prose, but then as uh, ideas come up that are better expressed or easier to understand if they're put in a list format, um, we'll, be, we'll be talking about how to do this kind of formatting as well. And we'll, we'll find that this is 
there are often some interesting questions around this, which is the better way to do it. Um, and so we're going to, uh, we'll, we'll be looking at some of the Wikipedia guidelines uh, around this as we, as we get more in depth in articles. When you see a red link like this, that's an indication of an article, a Wikipedia article that hasn't been created yet. So if I click on this, I'm going to get to a blank page. Uh, it will give me uh, an option to create that page. And that's sort of, that's one of the, um, one of the nice things about Wikipedia is that it really makes it easy to create a new article that way. Uh, so if you're, if you're editing an article like Open Educational Practices, and let's just say that we, um, we thought that the Center for Open Learning and Teaching uh, was something that deserved to have a Wikipedia article uh, and we wanted to start it, we could just create a link there and then click on the link and we would immediately be creating a new article. So we're going to get into some of the technicalities around that uh, as we go through the course, but uh, just to kind of point out that that's the, the general approach to how Wikipedia tends to grow. Um, so I'm going to Scroll down again here, we're, we're going to see uh, some, more, uh, some more formatted tables. And then as we get to the end, we get to some, uh, some more interesting sections here too. Um, throughout the article, the links that we've seen are almost always going to be to other Wikipedia articles. So um, in, the, in the sections in the actual body of the article. But of course, uh, using citations to external sources is a really important part of how Wikipedia works. And so those links you're generally going to find in the references section at the bottom. Uh, and you see these little icons to the right of the links. There's a, a little lock icon or a PDF icon uh, or even just this little box with an arrow. Those icons typically indicate something that's an external link as opposed to a link to another Wikipedia article. So generally, external links will be confined to the references section and the external link section. Uh, someone, I think, someone have a question? No. Um, so let's see. I, <clears throat> what I'd like to show you next is the. Uh, I'm going to go through the tabs at the top of the page, and this is going to start to give you. Um, a bit of an idea of how this, how this will, uh, how, how an article like this evolves, and how you can get involved in that process. So the first link to the right of the article is always going to be talk, and the talk page is a place specifically reserved to discuss the improvement of this particular article. So every single article on Wikipedia has its own talk page, uh, and if you look at that you can get a sense of who's been working on the article. Sometimes you'll, sometimes you'll click on it and you'll find that there is no discussion. So there's, um, especially on an article that, uh, that hasn't undergone a whole lot of development or that isn't controversial where it's pretty obvious how to develop it, there might not be much of anything here at all. But if there are people actively talking about what sections should be there, what sources are, are good to cite, things like that, this is where it's going to happen. You're also going to see, if you see beige, beige boxes at the top, um, those are those are generally some information about the article and about its its history within Wikipedia. So they're not explicitly discussion, but they're put on the talk page because that's sort of the most convenient place to keep track of this kind of information. Uh, in this case, there's just this one box that says this article is a part of Wiki Project Open Access. So Wiki Project is is a place for people who are interested in a general topic to share ideas. We'll get into that uh, in some more detail as the course goes on. You'd also might see things like um, if an article has been through uh, one of Wikipedia's peer review processes, which we'll also be looking at in some more detail, it's going to note that. So if it's been judged to be one of the best articles on Wikipedia, it's going to link you to the discussion where that was determined and, um, and, uh, and sort of tell you some of that history. Uh, just like the, the course talk page, if you scroll down here, you'll find the uh, the most recent comments are going to be at the bottom. Uh, so 
as we look here, it just beginning to scroll down, we're seeing uh, things from June, May, um, and then as we scroll down, we'll see the, the dates uh, start to get a little bit later. And then you also see things here like this, this here, open access articles. So this editor had a list of, um, of possible uh, references to expand the article that he wanted to keep track of, and so he put it on the talk page. These aren't things that, at this point, that he had actually incorporated into the article, but things that he was considering incorporating into the article. So uh, sometimes the talk page can be useful for things like that, where you have an idea that, that isn't fully fleshed out yet, but you just want to park some information while you think it over and maybe get someone else's input. So moving along in the tabs at the top, um, the the read tab is essentially just uh, another version of the article or talk tab. You'll see that it's uh, it's it's highlighted when you're on either of those pages. So you're basically you're just reading the article or you're reading the talk page. But the next tab or two tabs uh, will say edit or edit source. So right now uh, we're actually in, there's there's testing going on for a new um, a new tool which is called the visual editor and that's what you see over here this edit beta uh, which will let you edit a Wikipedia page without learning any kind of code or syntax uh, but it also doesn't let you edit everything so I'm going to click on that um, and give you a quick look at it um, so if you just go in and type into the text. Uh, you don't you don't have to I guess this will this will be a more clear contra contrast once we look at the uh, at the older editing format. And then at the, the top here you have uh, you can cancel your editor, you can save the page. So I'm going to just cancel that for now. And what we're going to be focusing on um, at least in the early stages of this class is actually the edit source button. So up until about a month ago this is the only way to edit Wikipedia. And um, for the foreseeable future, it's going to be important to have at least some understanding about how this works uh, until the, the visual editor is kind of more uh, robust and finished. So if I click Edit Source, you're going to see this. Uh, you see a lot of code in here. So you're basically seeing the same text that we did in the article, Open Educational Practices, have been defined by various groups of scholars, etc. Uh, but then you see there are bits of code in here, like this puts a footnote at the end of that sentence. Um, if you see double brackets, like down here, double brackets around text, that will create a link to the article, and things like that. If you see, um, if you see, I'm not seeing them right now, but if you have like three, um, three. Uh, single quote marks at the beginning and end of something that's going to turn it bold. So, uh, and I'll just click preview so that you can see the results of what I just did. Anytime you make edits, you can you can preview what they're going to look like. So I turned the word not bold down here. Um, so anytime you make an edit, you have the ability to preview it before you save it. And you also have the ability to see the changes that it's going to make as compared to what was there before you made your edit. So to get an idea of that, let's look at the next tab over, which is this View History tab. So the history, this is probably uh, one of the more, uh, this, this might be one of the more confusing pages uh, until you have some sense of what's going on, but it's also one of the most useful things in understanding how an article got to its current state. So what we have here is one line for every revision to the article, uh, the, with the most recent one at the top in this case. And I'm going to just go briefly across this line and uh, tell you what each part of it means. I'm going to start with the date, and then I'll come back and explain the stuff on the left after I'm uh, at the end. So the date uh, tells you when the edit was made, and it also gives you an ability to look at exactly that revision of the article. So if we're interested in what um, the article looked like when Red Welly was done editing it uh, on June 18th, we can just click on that. 
And anytime we're looking at an old revision of the page, we'll see this sort of rose-colored bar at the top that reminds us of that. This is an old revision of the page. But this is going to uh, basically give us a look in, into the into the past. And if you're this this is something that you might want to do. For instance, if you see that an that an article is like is missing some information that you're sure you saw there a couple of months ago, um, or if you see some new information and you're wondering just how much of it was added recently, you can easily go back and see what it used to look like. So I'm going to go back to the revision history screen. So the next line to the right of the date is the username of the person who made that edit. So uh, a moment ago I said as as Red Welly had edited it, that's, that's how I knew it because immediately to the right of that date I saw her name. So uh, first you have the, the username that person chose and then talk, which is a, uh, a publicly visible uh, uh, page for questions or comments directly to that user as opposed to about the article. Uh, I see Sarah's telling me I should take some questions, so I will in just a sec. Um, so the, uh, the, the talk page will let you leave a note for that person. Um, and then the contrib screen will give you a list of that person's contributions to all manner of different articles. So that screen actually looks kind of similar to the one that we're looking at right now, but it'll be all of her edits to different articles as opposed to a number of different people's articles, the edits to this one article. And I'm going to pause and look at the chat window. Who has a question? Hey, I, I was just suggesting it might be a good time to oh, see okay. if people are feeling oriented because um, there's a lot of information coming all at once, but there are no specific questions coming aside from connectivity ones. Okay. Um, so that's a good point, and uh, I'm, it's also a good point for me to pause and take a breath. I sometimes uh, <laughs> get uh, get carried away here, and uh, I. It's it's very helpful for me if people have questions because uh, you know unlike a regular classroom I can't I can't see you it's hard for me to tell who's following and uh, if people's eyes are glazing over so it's true it is it's a lot of information that I'm putting out there right now and I'd love to know if it's making sense so you can either type your questions into the chat window um, that's probably the best way uh, at this point oh you know. <clears throat> Just taking a step back, uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the general intro is the um, the lab sessions. So you may have seen this on the uh, on the uh, the course page. Every week we have a lab session, which is on Thursday at the same time as the class, and these are generally a, a much more interactive session. So you might have noticed that I'm really doing all the talking today. Um, and it's not because I love to hear myself talk. It's really <laughs> just because there's a lot of information that I want to get across to you. But I really, we, we, we want to hear from you as well. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear you talk about the articles that you're working on. So um, the lab sessions are really a good opportunity for that. Uh, okay, I see something from Trish. Any good suggestions about when sometimes you try to save and someone else has been working on the article at the same time? So yeah, that's this can be a really frustrating thing, uh, known as an edit conflict. Um, and and Trish, I think I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna hold off on that for a moment. We're gonna be uh, let's see uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be signing up for Teams in a moment, and uh, I think that'll I think that's a question that's gonna fit in pretty well with that. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the article. Um, okay, so so I just covered. Let's see the the date that the date will take you to that revision of the article, um, and then the user who had most recently edited the article. So moving over to the right from that, uh, I'm going to just stay on the same line that I was using as as an example. The next two numbers that you see tell you how long the article is. Uh, in the English language or in, in the um, Roman alphabet, uh, a byte is essentially 
a character or a letter. So this will give you a rough idea of how long the article was. Uh, and the, the second one tells you what the change of that edit was. And if it's a, a larger change, it'll generally be bold. So I don't really use those ones a whole lot, but it can be useful if you're just scanning through the list and trying to see where the major changes were made. Um, if, you know, for instance, if you're trying to see when several paragraphs were, were added, uh, this might be the first edit I would look at since this is over a thousand characters were added in that edit. And then finally, after that, you get um, what's known as an edit summary. And when we start making edits, uh, there's going to be an opportunity for you to describe what it is that you're doing in that revision. And this is where that shows up. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm going to really encourage you to use that every time you make an edit. And this is why, is because when someone else is trying to understand what's been added to the article, this is what they're going to see. So here we have one where Clem said that he joins two identical sources. Uh, another, and then if you see something in gray, that tells you what section of the article the edit was made to. So in this case, he added something to the see also section. He added links to projects in, Olcott, in the Olcott's roadmap. So the, um, this will give you the person's description of what they did. If you want to actually see um, explicitly exactly what they did, that's what the links on the left-hand side are for. So I'm going to come back now to the left-hand side of the, of the screen. And anytime you want to compare any two lines, you can use these buttons to choose those lines and then click Compare Selected Revisions. So let's say, for example, that I'm interested in what Clem did between Red Welly's edits and the most recent edit, which was by Yobot. Uh, I'm going to click on the edit immediately before his first edit in that string, so the one that actually the edit by Red Welly. What did it look like after Red Welly was done editing it, but before Clem started editing it? And then I'm going to click on the button on the right-hand side for his most recent edit. So we've got basically a range selected that includes all of his edits and nobody else's. And now I'll click Compare Selected Revisions. And what we get here is something that is known as a diff screen. Um, that's a, a good term to learn. D-I-F-F -F stands for the difference between the two revisions of the article. And this is a really useful screen to look at or to link to um, let's say if we wanted to, let's say if we wanted to ask Clem why he did something or um, tell him that we, we thought uh, that, that something should have been phrased differently, we might want to pull this up and then copy the URL and paste that into our response so that he knows exactly which edit of his we're talking about or which string of edits. So on the left-hand side, you see a representation of the old version. And again, you'll see all the all that wiki code that we saw in the edit screen before. So everywhere you see something that's highlighted, that's something that was removed. And then on the right-hand side, uh, these are the things that have been added. So he took out the word has, he added the word have. Or he changed the word has to have, I guess is a better way to say that. Uh, and as we scroll down, we'll, we can see what he did in a number of different se uh, sections. Uh, and then as we get down to the see also section, you see he added a number of different things to the see also section every, everywhere there's a new line here. So I'm going back to the revision history screen. So what I just showed you is how you can compare any two lines, but then the very left-hand column is, uh, is basically shortcuts to the most common uh, versions of that. So if, if you want to see what an what any one edit itself was, you can click the prev link, which is previous. So if we wanted to see what did Red Welly do here, we just click on previous, and that's going to be the same as clicking these two buttons, because it's comparing this line to the one immediately below it. Uh, and also, you can click on the, the cur link, which is going to compare that edit to the most recent version of the page. So that is the equivalent. If, if I click this cur link, that's going to be um, the equivalent of how I've just set up the buttons right here. So those are just shortcuts to make it a little easier to get to the more common uh, diff links that you might want to see. 
So hopefully this screen starts to give you a sense of how uh, how it's possible to work with people all over the world and uh, you know at different different times when one of you is logged in and one of you is not and still have a coherent uh, shared understanding of how an article is developing and what you're doing with it. This is really key to that process, um, is that every revision of the article is saved and anyone can go back and look at it and do comparisons at any time. Um, I, th I think if, 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 um, I think one of the things that, that can be difficult for people to grasp about Wikipedia is, well, why doesn't it just, you know, if, if, if I'm looking at an article and I just edit it and I put in something that's blatantly wrong, uh, you know, why wouldn't that just stay and why, why wouldn't it just end up being a, a really random collection of information? Well, this is one of the key reasons is that if I edit this right now and put in, you know, let's just say I say, uh, birds like to fly. Uh, I'm not going to click save, but I will, I'll do a, a preview. If I did click save, that would immediately show up at the top of that history list. And anybody who's interested in this article would see it there and could see it. not only that I had edited the article, but it would also highlight this birds like to fly line. And that would look strange. What does that have to do with open educational practices? Nothing. So that would, so that would be sort of a cue for them to immediately revert my, my change. Um, so how would someone who's interested in the topic notice it? Well, that's, um, the, the main way that you can follow articles is through the watch list. So the final tab that we see here is this star, and that's going to allow you to add a page to your watch list. If it's filled in with blue, that means it's on your watch list. Also, as I click it, you see it comes up with a little note that tells me I did that. And when something is on your watch list, you can always, you can always see the most recent changes to all the articles in your watch list by clicking watch list in the upper right hand side of the screen. This is one of the main advantages of creating an account is that it allows you to keep track of stuff you're interested in. So this screen, uh, again, is, it looks kind of familiar to uh, now that we've looked at the history screen, uh, but it gives me a chronological list of all the different edits to different articles with the most recent at the top. So uh, with that, I think it would be I'm, I'm missing a few things here, but I think I can come back to them in the lab and in next week. Uh, but I do, I want to make sure that we take a look at the team page and that everybody joins a team. So I'm going to go back to our main page and scroll to the bottom, and I'm going to click on the teams page. So why don't you follow along with me on your own computer? Um, and you're going to, you'll see instructions at the top of this. Uh, but essentially what, what I would like everyone to do right now is to choose any one of these, these teams starting, starting up near the top and add yourself to one of the teams. So the way that you'll, and you, we can see that some of you have already jumped ahead and done this, which is wonderful. Um, um Pete? And basically what we're going to do here is, yes. I think some people had also already added themselves to the round two page. Hopefully yeah. they've already re-added themselves to this one, but we probably will need to go through and check that. Yeah. So I, at the very beginning of the class today, I, um, I noticed uh, through a couple of your comments uh, in the chat window that I had failed to update that link uh, from the last time. So the, the link was pointing to the round two version of the class instead of the current one. So if you already signed up for a team, you might want to double check and make sure that you're actually listed on this page uh, and that you didn't accidentally, uh, due to my mistake, add yourself to the previous team. Um, and if you have any, any questions about that, let me know and I will go and, and double check and make, make sure after we're done with this class. Anyhow. Um, why don't it, so you can see the format? Why don't I'm going to click into my entry up at the top here. So on every line, uh, you see this edit source link. So I'm going to click on edit source next to my name, 
and I suggest that uh, that you guys I'll do this as well. You can just copy everything in this section, and this is a good technique for for doing all kinds of editing on Wikipedia is to copy something that looks similar to what you want to do and then edit it to suit your needs. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to the main page, and let's say I wanted to join team team three. Uh, I, I would just, and, and this is how I suggest you uh, that you do it: is just pick something, not the very next one, may, maybe the very next one, uh, maybe you know anything in the next five or six. Click on Edit Source, and I'm going to just replace what's there. I'm going to replace the word Student One with what I had copied, and then I'm, and then if if I were you, I would replace it with my name. So. If my name was Bobby, I'd put Bobby. If my username was Bobby17, I would put that in there. So that's the actual uh, the actual name of your user account. So it's the one that appears up in the upper right. In this case, it's Pete Forsyth Demo. Right? And then uh, just write a sentence or so about yourself. Once you've done that, you can click on Save Page. And I'm going to not save, but I'll do Show Preview. And you can see that replaced the word student one with Bobby and then it gave links to my user page, my talk page, and my contributions. So I'm going to give you guys a moment to, to do that and I'm sure some questions are going to come up. I'm sure some edit conflict may come up. Uh, so let's just take a minute and do it and feel free to use the chat window if you are having trouble or if you need some help. I think it's great that so many people have already added themselves to Teams. Indeed. It's one of the most exciting things about these first sessions, seeing people jump in and get started. Yes, uh, Sarah uh, made a, a great suggestion in the chat window. When you're when you're doing this, if you say you've just been thinking it through and now you know what you're going to do, it's always a good idea to hit the refresh button in your browser just before you start editing, uh, because if somebody else has added themselves, it's going to you know, updating the page first is is a good idea. Now, did you say a few words about what the role of the Teams is going to be? Uh, I'm, I, I was going to give people a chance to join them, and then I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. So why don't you leave a note in the, uh, in the chat window when you're done. That'll give me a sense how long we need to leave. Oh, and I, I should point out, uh, Trish uh, it, it took our course the last time and actually wrote, wrote really an excellent article on the FET Interactive Simulations, which is an organization and a project that she works on, uh, and has named Team 1 OER Growth. So if, if, you, if there's a specific area that you want to work in or if you see that someone else has named a team in a way that's interesting to you, feel free to choose that team. So we've also got Team Fabulous here, which I think you're all fabulous, but uh, if, you, if you're feeling especially fabulous, you might want to be Student 4 on Team Fabulous.
So maybe we should do a show of hands to see if people are actually, or rather a poll to see if people are still actively working on that. That think? sounds good. So up at the top above our names, you can see a bunch of little buttons. On the right button is a little polling where you can choose yes and no. And if you're, let's see, what are we doing? Check mark means, uh, <laughs> I guess that usually you'd think it means done, but I was going to suggest we use it to mean still working on it. But yeah, let's clear it. I want to start it over again. And let's just say, if you're still working on it, please click yes. All right. We have people actively working on things. I like this tool. So I've been refreshing the page a bunch, and I'm seeing lots of people adding their names. Okay. So, and it's, you know, I, I see that some of the some of the teams are filling out to four people, and uh, some of them only have one person on them. So we'll we'll come back and and adjust for this um, you know, as we go forward. So feel free to just add yourself wherever, and if we end up with teams that are not very well balanced out, we'll reshuffle them. Peter, do you want to? Okay, so I see we're really getting to the end of the hour. I was just going to say real quick, it looks like Rosemary is saying she's having a little trouble signing up for her team. Do you want to run through really quickly how to how to do it again? Just the, the logistics? Um, well, we're coming, we're coming right to the end of the hour, so I think um, if you're having trouble, I would suggest that you leave a note on the talk page. So uh, just click the talk tab at the top, and, or send us an email. Uh, send me an email at, uh, here, I'll put my email in the chat window. Uh, and so let's deal with that offline if people are having difficulty joining up. Um, the, uh, but I, I do want to cover what the teams are for. Um, so you'll see the, the teams are referred to in the week one uh, homework. So I'm going to go back to the week one page here and click on our week one page. So uh, under the homework section, you're going to see this join the team. So uh, hopefully you've already done that. And then um, it, it, let's see, I'm, I haven't looked at this, uh, this page this morning, so I'm trying to remember exactly how I described it. Oh, I think actually what I'm, what I'm looking for is, is the, uh, Instructions at the top of the team's page itself. So connect with your team. Uh, so this this is really this is what you should do between now and next week. Um, so uh, follow these instructions to to figure out how to send an email to your teammates. Uh, you can choose a team name, uh, etc. And then what we're going to do uh, also between now and next week is uh, is choose an article for you guys to look at. And um, and then we'll be using the course discussion page to uh, uh, to reflect on a Wikipedia article. So uh, I I think I ended up rushing this Teams thing at the end of the session a little bit, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm sure there are going to be some questions, so please do feel free to leave your questions on the talk page. I'll be watching those actively, and then also uh, we can work through this in the lab session on Thursday. So I want to thank everybody again for showing up and for your interest in the class. Uh, we really look forward to getting to know you a little better and um, and seeing what articles you all pick to work on. Um, and looking forward to seeing you Thursday. Sarah, anything else to add before we wrap up? No, I'm just putting another quick explanation of how the talk page works. And if you're feeling a little lost, don't worry about it. Try to join us in the lab for some real good Q&A time, the same time on Thursday. Um, and if you're not yet feeling comfortable uh, posting stuff to the talk page, just email us, because we really want everyone to you know, stay engaged and get comfortable. And it all it makes more sense over time.
That's all. Thank you very much for coming. And I, I just told Rosemary that I or we could stay around for a minute and help her sign up for a team. Certainly. And that's that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and I do have some time. Uh, so if if people are having trouble, and you know, not just Rosemary, if anyone's having trouble and wants to resolve that now, I'm I'm happy to uh, to help out with that. But let's uh, let's wrap up, and we'll stop the archive recording. And um, and if you want to stick around and ask some questions, I've got about 15 minutes. I'm not sure about Sarah, but I can stick around and take questions. Yeah, me too. Perfect. Great. Thank you, everybody.